Hi, welcome to Spherical Cows, and yep, it's a physics video. So there's a common joke in physics, and it has a lot of variants. It goes something like this. A theoretical physicist was asked by a farmer to help come up with a method of increasing milk production in their dairy herd. The physicist thinks about it for a while, and then responds, Assuming a spherical cow. So it's a joke about how physicists will take a difficult problem and remove complexities until it's a problem that they actually know how to solve. If they turn it into a problem that no longer reflects reality very well, that's a spherical cow. But I hope to convince you in this video that the use of spherical cows is actually really important in physics. In fact, so important that I put a spherical cow alongside Bayes' theorem and the Gaussian distribution in the Think Like a Physicist logo. So in case you ever wondered what that blobby thing is, yeah, that's a cow. So if you've ever taken physics classes, you've likely seen the physicist's tendency to simplify problems and make approximations. You might have seen examples like the following. Ignore air resistance. Assume a frictionless inclined plane. Assume an ideal battery with negligible internal resistance. Assume the pulleys are frictionless and massless. A mass is on the end of an ideal spring. Assume the speed of a wave is independent of its frequency. Now, these simplifications aren't necessarily rising to the level of a spherical cow. But if their deviations from reality render them inadequate for the purposes at hand, they can veer into the domain of bovine sphericity. So, at this point, it might sound like spherical cows are what happens when a physicist doesn't know what they're doing. And admittedly, that's sort of true. But they can be an important tool for figuring out what you're doing. So here I want to give two reasons why spherical cows are important. First, they can be an important stepping stone for solving hard problems. And second, science progresses by being able to explain a wider variety of phenomena and more complicated phenomena with time. In other words, sometimes today's state-of-the-art science is tomorrow's spherical cow. Okay, so first let's look at solving hard problems with spherical cows. So the procedure goes as follows. We take a hard problem, we remove a lot of complications in the problem. Then we solve that new, easier problem. And then after that easier problem is solved, we start to add complications back in until you get something that is sufficiently similar to the problem that you actually want to solve. So you take your hard problem and you simplify it down into a spherical cow. Then you solve your spherical cow problem, and once you have that solution, you start adding complications back in. Complications like cylindrical legs, a spherical head, conical horns. Now this still isn't a realistic cow, but it might be good enough for your purposes. Okay, so let's look at an example. Let's say that we want to find the trajectory of a comet over the next year. Let's say we know its current position and velocity, but we need a very precise result, and we need to take into account the gravitational pulls of the Sun, of Jupiter, and of Saturn. We also know that the effects of Jupiter and Saturn are going to be much, much smaller than that of the Sun. So here's the problem we want to solve. We want to figure out the comet's trajectory taking into account the gravitational pulls of the Sun, of Jupiter, and of Saturn. But this is a hard problem, 
because we need to know the position of the comet relative to Jupiter and to Saturn throughout the trajectory in order to know the gravitational pulls of Jupiter and Saturn on the comet. So let's solve a simpler problem first. Let's forget about Jupiter and Saturn and just calculate the trajectory of the comet only taking into account the gravitational pull of the Sun. This is a much simpler problem and this problem can be our spherical cow. So here's our procedure. We'll find the trajectory of the comet when acted upon only by the Sun. And then for this trajectory, we'll calculate the gravitational forces from Jupiter and Saturn. And then from that, we'll calculate the changes to the trajectory of the comet from these forces. So that's basically how we take our spherical cow and go to our slightly more complicated cow. Now this procedure won't give you the exact solution, but it might be close enough to the exact solution for your purposes. If you're interested, you can check out a link in the description below to an XKCD comic that is related to annoying physicists solving problems in this manner. So you can check that out below. Okay, now let's talk about spherical cows and how they relate to how science progresses. So sometimes we have revolutions in science where old ideas are replaced with radically different ones. So for example, we now know that Newtonian mechanics breaks down at high speeds. If you're looking at a scenario where high speeds are involved, you need to look at special relativity. Similarly, Newtonian mechanics breaks down at small scales. If you're working on a problem that involves small scales, you need quantum mechanics. In both of these cases, Newtonian mechanics was an approximation that had a certain range of validity. It was an approximation to the more general, deeper theory. But even though we have these revolutions in science, that doesn't mean that we always throw out the old paradigms. If they are good approximations, when certain conditions are met, they can still be useful. Now Newtonian mechanics is valid at large scales and low speeds, and it's a whole lot easier to use than special relativity or quantum mechanics. So consider a scenario where high speeds are involved, so special relativity is needed in order to get a suitably precise description of reality. But let's also say that the speeds are not so high that Newtonian mechanics is completely useless. In a case like this, using Newtonian mechanics instead of special relativity might be a quick way to get a ballpark answer for the problem you're trying to solve. In other words, Newtonian mechanics can be your spherical cow model. So today's use of Newtonian mechanics also illustrates a characteristic of how science moves forward. Today's scientific understanding is an approximation to deeper ideas which we'll discover in the future. Or in other words, today's state-of-the-art science is tomorrow's spherical cow. If you'd like more information along these lines, you might want to check out the video Science as an Iterative Approximation to Nature, available on this channel. Now I do want to make one final point, which is that spherical cows, and also other approximations, are only useful if you have some idea of how good or bad an approximation to reality they actually are. If you think a particular model is a close approximation to reality, and it's actually not, then unforeseen errors can result. So you need to have a sense of the amount of uncertainty introduced by your approximations and your simplifications. Okay, so to summarize, I hope that I've convinced you that spherical cows are useful and that they're important.